In this video, I'm going to be sharing with you exactly what I think and why I do what I do in a live online game of Madden 21. What's up guys, my name is Cody and I just want to thank you for taking the time to watch this video. If this is your first time visiting my channel, my channel is all about helping people become the best Madden player that they can possibly become. And so if you want to get better at this game, I just want to encourage you to click the subscribe button at the bottom right hand corner of your screen. It is completely free to subscribe to the channel and it just allows you to be able to know whenever we release new videos that can help you become a better Madden player in Madden 21. Now in this video, we are going over our nickel 335 wide defensive guide on the defensive side of the ball and our New York Jets gun bunch guide on our offensive side of the ball. So if you want to get either of those guides, they are available for you in the description of this video. Now, as you can see here, I'm going to be playing someone that is running a lot of gun bunch tight end. Um, and so we are going to basically try to craft our defense and uh, accordingly to that and be able to be very effective against that. So as you can see right here, um, we're able to get a nice little lurk here after late. He actually just missed it. I think honestly, it was just, he kind of got slow coming back to the read. I probably played a little bit over aggressive on the post route and a little bit way too lax on that little route to the tight end. But as you can see, we're able to get the interception right off the rip and we're setting up our offense. Now, as you guys know, I love to simplify. I think that it's super, super important. And so if we are running um, we are running the gun bunch out of the New York Jets playbook. If you want to get the entire offensive guide, it is available in the description. Literally, everything is available in the description for you. So if you want to get the offense or the defense, they're both available and they both have very, very in-depth guides. I literally walk you through exactly how I do what I do um, in video form, in written form, as well as using film study analysis and things like that. So if you want to get the guides, those are available for you uh, in the description of this video. So anyway, starting out, we're going to go to Flood. And as you know that I recently have kind of had a little bit of um, what I would call a Madden epiphany. And that Madden epiphany is essentially this, is that I want to challenge myself to simplify. I think that there's power in positive constraints. And so for the last week or so, I've only been running five a maximum of five plays on both sides of the ball. That's what I've been running every single time. So I've only I only I would literally only run five plays on both sides of the ball. And what it's forced me to do is it's honest, like I said, it's forced me to simplify. It's forced me to simplify uh, what I do and, and kind of just basically learn that direction. So right there is actually a really good adjustment. He manned up um, Zadarius Smith, who I didn't think in a million years he would actually man him up on him, but he did go ahead and do that. And that's gonna bring us up in a fourth, fourth in inches uh, situation. Now right here, um, let's see what he does here, but I'm just gonna try to go to base and just pick up the first down. I just wanna get the first down. Uh, we're able to almost get a touchdown right there and I'll tell you what, the base run is is truly one of the better runs in the game. It's It really is. A lot of people don't realize how effective it is. Um, and so it, it just really is. It's really, really good. So right here, he's going to go to some man coverage. And honestly, I did not think he could out, get out there. And I just threw a pick, and I got a very lucky tackle. So we, we both throw picks off rip. Not a great start for us offensively at all. Um Missed two, probably, probably honestly just missed a couple reads, um, but it is what it is. So, um, anyways, back to defense for us. So, on defense, um, I'm running cover two to the wide side. I actually really like this approach, especially against Bunch right now. Um, this is a very, very decent little play. And, as you, and the reason why is because it can stop that right there. So, right there, he ran. Um, that's why I do that. So, he ran curl flat corner. And I actually put a video yesterday out about this defense that I've been running against Bunch, whether it be Bunch tight end or Gun Bunch normal. Um, and what it is is like the mat, it's a way to manipulate the match coverage so that it really, really does a good job. Uh, right here, we're just going to try to keep it simple, take the flat, um, do a little stop and go, you know, just kind of simple, easy, um, and just try to kind of. You know, again, just simplify, 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 simplify. He's wanting to blitz me. Um, you know, so we're going to just take the simple reads. If he's going to play zone coverage and he's going to play hard flats, we can throw the route to triangle all day long. We can literally, it's a layup every single time we can hit it. Now, whenever I start to experience a lot of blitzing, I normally will take the circle receiver over here and I'll just put him on a little hitch. The reason why is for that right there. As you see, um, if they're blitzing the middle, 
and they're leaving, they're, if they're blitzing, honestly, it's very likely that if you're going to experience a five-man blitz, especially a five-man blitz, pr definitely a six-man blitz, but especially a five-man blitz, if they're blitzing you with a five-man blitz like this, where he, you see he's trying to literally just use rush me and just get me before I can throw the ball, it's actually a very good pressure um, that he's running. Um, and so if they're doing something like that, and you could tell he's setting it up if he isn't. And you see here, he's, I mean, look at the right here. I can just double team his his user off the edge here. Um, probably gonna drop into coverage here, honestly. But he does go to that man coverage. We're able to hit the option right again and easy reads. But essentially, you know, there's a couple questions you wanna ask. You know, you wanna ask who's open now. You wanna ask who can pressure me now. So who's the person that can get me? Who can come get me? You see here that he's gonna try to user rush off his edge. Now right there, he actually went away from it. He's actually got a really good user here, and we're just gonna kinda force him to go that way. He probably should have sent the guy that was in main coverage, but we're just gonna take it out. It's actually a really good user. Um, that was really, really effective usering. Uh, I missed a couple reads, and so, I mean, he's playing good defense. This is off to a pretty fun start here. This is gonna be a good game. Uh, it's gonna be a good matchup. Right here, he's showing pressure again. Um, so we're just gonna anticipate pressure and hit our check down read get up field for about five yards and now what we're going to do is we are going to use one of the core components in offense the five core components in offense hopefully it doesn't quit out already um the five core components of offense is to have a power play a counter play he is going to go ahead and quit out so we're going to jump into another game that was actually a fun game i was really unfortunate really really unfortunate that he quit out but while he while we're in this little transition period um i do want to talk about the five keys to my offense and defense i also want to give you one little pro tip everyone does this if if you are a good madden player you do this okay this is like a must do if you take a look here in my settings obviously i can choose my own playbooks um i can go you know nfl live playbooks i can do whatever i want here um do all my uniforms and all this but this is really really important for the coin toss i always choose to kick always 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 choose to kick and then you're good to go okay you want to always choose to kick it's really really important to do that um it just helps you, you you're never out of a game whenever you get the ball at halftime now uh, the five key components to any offense is to have a power play and what a power play does is a power play is simply a play that you can call pretty much every single time if you want to. It's a, it's a play that you could literally go 80% of the game in, okay? It's a play that you could literally call 80% of the time. And the reason why it's uh, a power play is because it forces the defense to have to do multiple adjustments to be able to stop it. They're not just going to be able to come out and call Tampa 2 stock and stop it. They're going to have to do some zone drops. They're going to have to use, do some usering. They're going to have to do something to stop the play. So that's kind of step one. Okay, it's really based out of the Lombardi sweep. It's based out of having, you know, this phrase from Vince Lombardi when he talks about the power sweep. He says, you know, gentlemen, this is the most important play we have. This is the play we must make, make go. This is the play that we will make go. And this is the play that we will run again and again and again. And that's with that philosophy that I um, talk about a power play. Now, um, on and then you want to have a counter play. So a play that looks very similar to the power play, but it goes in a little bit of a different direction. It basically takes advantage of, you know, kind of over pursuit. Here's another little pro tip here. Um, whenever you're like on defense for the first time and you're trying to set up all your substitutions and everything what you want to do is you just want to pause the game and then you just you don't you don't even have to do anything in the pause menu um you're just giving yourself a little bit more time to make uh adjustments so as you see right here at the bottom i was about to run out of time and then i was basically given you know an entire another 15 to 13 seconds which allows me to finish my adjustments relatively easily so anyways, uh, we'll come back to the offense here in just a moment, but I want to focus in on defense here for just a second here. So a little defensive little defensive drive here. Going to go right up the seam, right off rip, and we're going to get a nice little interception right off the bat. This is why the match defense is so good. On defense, the five things that you want to be able to do is you want to be able to stop the run. So you want to have a play in your arsenal that will, is very, very effective uh, against the run. The next thing that you want to do is you want to be able to play match defense, which is what I played right there on that play and what got me the interception. And then the third thing that you want to be able to do is you want to be able to play zone drop or I call it, yeah, uh, zone drop defense. The fourth thing is you want to be able to play man defense in an effective way. And the last thing that you want to be able to do is you want to be able to always weave pressure throughout. So you want to have blitzes that you can go to. 
Okay. So now we're back on offense and we're starting with our power play. Now, one of the questions is who can blitz me? Where can I get pressured from? I can get pressured from the left side. He doesn't send pressure from the left side and we're able to go. What's really, really important is you want to ask yourself two primary questions at the snap of the ball, pre-snap. Number one is who's open now? Who is open based off the alignment of the defense? Based on how they're, based on where they're standing, who do I think is going to get open? The second question you want to ask is who can possibly pressure me? Who can pressure me? Where can the pressure come from? And then you want to make your read. So, okay, no pressure, no pressure. And we're just going to go with our, you know, our, our man beater right there. So if this, then that formula, having answers. This is all about reading and reacting. It's all about execution. If you have a good play design and you can execute it, you're going to be very, very effective at this game. See here, he's just going to sit in man coverage. And we're just going to keep hitting him. We're just going to keep peppering him with the option rounds, the quick outs. That's an easy way to be able to beat me in coverage. And what we do is basically force you to go to something other than man coverage. We want to do, what we want to see you do is what we, ideally, ideally, we will force someone into cover three. That's the ideal thing. With flood, you can't run really anything but cover three. Um, you can run cover two um, a little bit, but not super consistently, honestly. Um, so we, we want to always try to get them to a cover three. That's what Jets Dig is designed to be. That's literally what Jets Dig is designed to be. So uh, we're going to go to our, you know what, actually due to the way that he's kind of structured his defense here, we're just going to go to the base run here and just try to get a touchdown right off rip. We're able to get in. And we're up seven nothing. Now this is the beauty of kicking the ball off. We're up seven to zero, okay? And we get ball at half. So in theory, we're really up by two possessions, not one possession. So that's absolutely huge. And again, the exact offense that I am running and the exact defense that I'm running, you can get both of those guides in the description. Each of them are $15 and they literally walk you step-by-step step through how to execute with written and video and film study analysis. So very, very in-depth eBooks that can help you get better step-by-step. Step. You can pick it up today and you can be running this tonight. Okay, so my opponent is coming back out in the five wide defense or five wide offense. I'm gonna go back to my cover four, um, my cover four show two. I'm actually gonna run cover two on the short side here. Um, I've actually kind of been experimenting with this. This is essentially a cover six. Um, I think that the cover six is a super, super underrated defense. Um, it just really does take away a lot of things here. As you see, there's nowhere for him to go. He actually ends up fumbling the ball and that's a huge turnover and the defense is able to get him once again. See, it's not, I'm t I cannot stress to you enough how important it really truly is to keep it simple. If you can keep it simple, if you can simplify what you're doing so that you can maximize your ability to actually do it, that is, that is huge. That is so, so important. And if he's going to stick with man coverage, we're going to dot him every single time. And we're not going to change. We're not going to change. We are going to force him to change. We're not just going to change for change's sake right we want to focus in on what are the little things what are the little things we can do right here we'll stop and go we'll get in down to seven yard line now real quick we remember this now this was an intentional flip here i wanted to see if he would follow and he actually did so that was good by him we'll stop we'll go and we're going to stick with that run because i think he's in quarters i think he's literally in quarters so we're going to force him to actually be able to stop the run here. The beauty of the base run is it's really, really hard to shoot it. It's really, it's okay. It's not that good of a run in terms of like, it's not going to average you a hundred yards a game. Like it's a, it's a two to five yard in a cloud of dust style of run because of the way the guard kicks. The guard doesn't really kick out properly, but um, for what it's worth, it is something that's very, very difficult for the opponent to shoot. And so we can definitely take advantage of that. Another little quick tip on special teams is I like to sky kick. I like to sky kick and go to the side here. And the primary reason why I like to do that um, is just so, number one, I typically would be able to get a free hit stick, but number two, it's really hard for them to return it for a touchdown if you do that. If you kick it deep, um, if you squib it, you know, there's opportunities. And I'm not saying there's not opportunities with that, but there, there are a lot, lot, I've given up a lot less touchdowns um, in that direction. So 
Uh, anyways, here my opponent is going to shift his strategy a little bit now. It looks like he's going to go to a little bit of a different strategy. Um, he does have this post over the top, and Perry Nickerson just got roasted. Um, man, great job by him, and he's back on the board, and we got ourselves a little bit of a ball game. That was, um, I think it might have just been a beat press situation. I'm not quite sure. And honestly, that's on me. Part of my job as the user, because I, one of the biggest things you start to learn about where you're vulnerable, um, we don't have like a deep middle third zone in the quarters. We just have quarters. And so skinny posts like that can sometimes, can sometimes beat the match, especially if they are a superior re receiver. So like Deshaun Jackson's very fast. He has very good route running. And so, so those are some of the reasons as to why he was able to get over me on that. It, it might have not even been a great play call. It's just he had a great route runner, runner on it. And that's where I've got to be a little bit more aware of that. And so he's right back on the board. A little stop, little go. And just kind of open up a little bit with the run game. Um, and then we're just going to get back into flood. It's very likely he's going to consistently stick with man coverage. Um, that seems to be his MO, and we're going to stick with our reads, right? If he's going to continue to play man coverage, we're going to continue to take our easy, easy reads. One little thing about playing uh, teams like the Eagles, teams like Aaron Donald and things like that, is if you double team them, um, it does help neutralize their pass rush a little bit. So as you can see there, I'm just double teaming Fletcher Cox. In second and five, man coverage again, option route again, a little stop and go, a little double juke, and pretty solid little gain right there. So we're 10 of 10 for 122 passing yards. Pretty solid uh, start. You really can't start any better than what we've done here. I mean, we've basically walked up and down. But the problem is he's really not changing. He's not, he's not, he's, he's kind of sticking with his system. Um, and so if he's going to say, and that's actually good defense. He's actually going to get a pick there. Um, I guess, I don't know. I guess Darius Slade, Darius Slade probably has like one step ahead or something. Um, so interesting. Didn't think that would, that would be able to stop me, but it actually did. I probably, and that's one of those things where you, you throw things on cuts so much that sometimes, you know, you just kind of get randomed out and that's what happened on that play. So we'll see if he goes back to that skinny post. If he does, we'll be able to stop it. Yeah. But you see right here, um, Oh, dang. Is that a little route to the back there? Um, if you watch, I think that was. I think that was white corner. I don't know what that was. But if you watch Perry Nickerson and, De and Deshaun Jackson on the matchup there, uh, what you're going to notice is depending on, like, his play cost. Like right here, you see, that time that that didn't work, right? That time it didn't work because, I, I, you know, he, he wasn't able to beat the press. So I'm pretty sure what happened on that post route was that it was just a beat press situation. That's one of the things that's I think very unfortunate about this off or this defense. Um, I wish that I could press with it and it not do that. Um, that is one of the like the little bit of a little bit of an issue. Perry, um, Perry just Perry's killing me right now. He's back in the game, and this is where I talk about like you're playing somebody that you know you're better than. Um, you're playing someone that usually this should not have happened. This is a situation, and, and part of it comes back to this is why I think it's so important to kick the ball off. Another quick tip on special teams is you don't just put the controller down. Um, wait until it gets to about five seconds before you choose your special teams on uh, whenever you're returning because you just want to make sure that they don't onside kick you. It's like really, really important. <laughs> um, anyway. So Tyler Irving comes back, and we're just going to kneel it out and um, head back in and see what we can do. I mean, I will tell you, like, man coverage, man coverage is, like, the frustrating thing because, like, what I'm going to do here is essentially the play flood. It's just the only thing that I'm going to do different is instead of having Adams run the out route against a one-step head corner, you're gonna see here it's the tight end, and the tight end's not, he can't get pressed, he's not gonna get stopped. So, um, you know, you have that in your arsenal. It's actually a int very interesting uh, strategy that my opponent is using. 
but using these little quick little out routes I think is super super important this dig route is really good I don't think I've hit that yet that's been very consistently open um, you know so hopefully we'll be back into kind of like where we need to be and like I said you know I mean he's just I mean he's literally just playing like man coverage there you see that's 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 what's normally happens on that route so I don't know how you know I don't I just don't know what happened and that's why you put Devontae Adams there so you can consistently be able to beat man to man coverage um, but yeah, no, no, no need for innovation. If he's not going to innovate, if he's not going to change, no need for us to change. And as you can see right here, we're not going to, I mean, we're just going to stay consistent with our reads. Um, we're going to put pop a run here just, just to kind of keep him honest against the run here. Um, you know, when you start getting down into this area of the field and this, I, his whole, his strategy has to be that I want to stay in this until you get inside like the five, you know, and then I want to try to get out. Uh, right here, I was really hoping Devontae would get open, and he did for me, all the way down to the one-yard line. Um, we'll see if we can run some clock here. I don't think we can. Oh, he did call a timeout, unfortunately. Okay. Um, we're going to set this run up. We probably won't have to end up going to it. This is just more of like a red zone type thing. But if we need it, we have that 0-1 trap from the single back trips um, that we can go into if we need to. Okay, I'm not saying we're going to. I'm just saying if we need to. We have that in our arsenal as well. Just, just something quick. If he's in a quarter set, it makes a lot of sense to just go right down into this. So as you see here, he is in a quarter set. So uh, we're just going to run the RPO trap. Honestly, um, you know, we probably could run base for the sake of the like whole simplicity thing, but it's like oh, one trap is you, is guaranteed. I mean, against quarters, quarters can't hang with that. Um, qu quarters and dime. That was dollar. I think that was dollar three two six or whatever. But that can't that can't stop it so you know we're able to get in there now defensively we've got to figure something out um for deshaun jackson he's kind of wrecking our defense he's kind of pulling the tyreek hill and in regs this is a little bit more of a problem than it is in mutt because in mutt pretty much everybody's the same ratings you have 99 speed and it goes against 99 speed and also you have 99 press and it goes against 99 b press so you kind of have a little bit more consistency in regs, you have a little bit more randomness, a little bit more fluke, a little bit more of that kind of like, you know, all my rating, you know, because I have such a higher rated player than you, um, it kind of worked out for me. So we just have to kind of be mindful of that. Uh, what that practically means for us is we're going to start running uh, cover two to Deshaun Jackson's side. Back on it. <sighs> Man, this guy is really not being... Not being a good, not being a good, uh, not being a good competitor. Um, we're gonna run cover two to Deshaun Jackson's side, so we're gonna use that cover six that I was talking about. Um, it's basically ran the same as quarters. The the only difference is essentially you're kind of saving yourself from the quarters solo check, which I don't always think is a great move. Like it can be good, it can also be bad. So, anyways, um, there we go. We got our defense set up this time. For the most part, um, he's got to run. He's, he, only two times he's ran all game, of course. Goes right into a little bit of a pass. And, oh, that's on me. I could have usered that. I should have usered that. I came down on the running back for whatever reason. And there we spy the safeties. Now, right here, I'm going to call timeout. It's actually a really, really a critical uh, point. So I, you know, we're in a situation right here where he's kind of like, honestly, I mean, he's kind of walked up and down the field on me uh, the last two drives. And so I'm going to call a timeout. I'm going to go to this down here. Um, and the reason why I'm doing this is because I know he's going to run the ball. Like every one of them, mom is going to run the ball inside the five if they can. Um, I feel very confident in my run defense, which is from the three, three, five wide, you know, with the spy and the safeties. I feel very, very confident in that. And so, you know, that's what I'm going to go to right here. Um, and that's so irritating. Oh, that's so irritating. I should have spied the safety. Gosh dang, I knew he was going to do that. I, mm, that's on me. That's just a bad, that's just bad adjusting. And you know what? 21 points, man. This, this guy is trucking along 21 points. We're going to have to adjust a little bit. I honestly don't feel bad. Like, I feel like what he's gotten has, it's not fluke, but I feel like what he's gotten from me is that it's not like he's finding consistent ways to beat match. It's more like I miss an adjustment. 
or I miss a gap shoot. You know what I mean? So there's games where you're like, man, he is beating this every single time and I need to change it up. There's also games where it's like, no, I just need to make sure that I get all my adjustments done properly and that's what I need to do. So uh, anyway, that's just kind of a little bit of a thing. Now, right here, I mean, you know he's gonna run man coverage. I mean, you know that's what you're gonna get. So man coverage, we're gonna go right to the in route, cross. Uh, and the reason why I was um, trying to hit on that timeout being super, super important is because it gives me a position. Now I'm in a position where I can go down and get three. The reason that's significant is because I get ball out of half. We're talking two possessions as a result of this. There's a chance that I can get up by two possessions as a result of this. And that's that's what I wanted to, to kind of hit on here. Okay, so, ah, man, it's kind of a weird spot just with how he's playing. What we're going to do is we are actually going to just keep it the same. You know what? We're just going to keep it the same. R1 did not work. Crap. Now we're going to have to scramble. We're going to throw it away. And there we just missed a read. We just we, we were kind of relying on Devontae Adams too much. That's where I thought about just putting the tight end on the out route. Like he kind of like randomly will stop him and he randomly won't, which is not a great, like, not a great thing. And that is also, that's another, like, that's just kind of irritating. Now, if you know, and again, like if you know they're running man, like you know that's what they're doing, that's where I would say like, you can go to situational plays because he's literally, you know, I mean, he's just running, you know, two men under and basically praying. Um, so, you know, that, that there's some flexibility with this. But anyways, um, what I'm going to do right here is I'm actually going to run a smart route adoption route. Um, and the reason why, um, man, he stopped me again. I'll just throw that away. Okay, so now I'm in a fourth and ten. Now I found myself in a fourth and ten, which is not where I want to be at all. Um, all because he, uh, all because he's running. Uh, this is very frustrating. But we're in a situation, so I'm gonna go to PA boot over. Um, I was trying to stay in bunch for most of the game here. Let's see. If I go to PA boot over. I should be able to flip this without a penalty. Yep. Okay. And the reason why I'm going to this is because I mean, this dude's running man. He's running man every single play. Um, you know, so we're just going to go to this. So anyway, we're just going to roll out here. He's going to chase us. And we're just going to kind of get up into field goal range. So we get up into field goal range here. Uh, we're going right up. We're spiking the ball. It's going to give us one more play. Uh, so we have one more play uh, to do something. I mean, man coverage is just, uh, man coverage is good against bunch. I mean, it's with good user. And if you have like a one step ahead, like this guy does, um, man coverage can be good against bunch. So, um, you know, that's just something that you have to kind of deal with. So what we're going to run right here actually um, is a little bit of a decoy almost actually of the way we're going to play this or roll this out. Um, but because he's running a deep half, we're gonna, just going to try smash return um, with the running back in route right here and just see what we can get. Bad user by him. And you know what? That's fine. We'll just check it down. And the man coverage did its job. The man coverage for him did what he wanted it to do. But also, we got what we wanted. We only really wanted three anyways. We're going to take our three, go into halftime, and then we're going to come out and we're going to literally um, dot him up and down the field again. So, you know, honestly, the man coverage that he's running, the type of man coverage, I'm pretty sure he's even shading over top. Um, but I'm not a hunt. He might not be. But he's, he's doing some shading as well. Um, but here, really critical point, very super important. Do See how I'm not selecting my play? You have to remind yourself to do this until you make it a habit. I am so guilty of not doing it. I kind of get you know in my own little world thinking about my next jive or whatever. Um, make sure you wait. It's so important. If you don't, they will onside kick you. I'm just telling you from experience. So uh, anyways. In, this, in the time that you think, well, there's no reason I need to wait. There's no possible reason why that's going to be where they're going to shame you. So I just want you to just want you to be on the lookout for that. So PA boot over was a critical play. Um, you know, it's a situational play. It's, it's bunch tight end. 
is really a two-minute drill style of offense. If you actually think about it, like it really is designed for the two-minute drill. So what I'm going to do is a simple little adjustment from Flood. Because of the way that he's playing, you see here that, you know, if I if I don't put if I put Devontae Adams on that route, it's kind of a 50-50 as to whether or not he's going to get it. But if I put Robert Tunyon on it, um, you know, I have much, much better odds. Uh, of that consistently beating man. I also could just run the ball if I wanted to. You know, this is one of those drives offensively, you know, where we really do have a lot of opportunity. Uh, Jets digs just not really a good look against man, honestly. I mean, it's okay. We'll go to Jets dig here just to change it up. He's going to completely bag us. We'll just step up and go with our quarterback. That's what I was talking about, Jets dig. I mean, it's just not a great look against man to man uh, with the way that he's running the style of man that he's playing it's not a great option um, you can adjust it a little bit to make it a great option but you know we don't really want to do that so uh, right here the other thing he's doing which is interesting um, we might get shamed Dad, on it took way too long to, to move um, the other thing that he's doing, which is actually interesting, is actually kind of shifting his man coverage. So, like, sometimes he'll man up the the corner on the left with the guy. That's where smash return to me. That's an over-adjustment. That's where we talk about, like, it, they're going to start over-adjusting. So you can go to something like smash return um, and have, you know, decent success. Right there, that's insane. Oh, my gosh. Oh, brother. That's crazy. That's that's so frustrating. That's and that's on me. That's on me for not executing well. But man, that is irritating. Um, okay. We're in the situation right here. We kind of have to rely on flood. I'm gonna put the running back on a smart route option route. It's a really late read, but it might actually just be wide open here. And of course it's gonna be wide open. Absolute laser. And that's what we talk about with the option routes. That's why I tell you every time every time I possibly can. Please run your option routes against man coverage. It's absolutely huge laser. And you'll see here, because he has so much uh, leverage onto the left side, the man coverage can't keep up with the running back. So as you can see right there, you know, very easy. You know, he's got leverage to the outside, which is why it's making it a little bit hard to hit it. But because you do something like that, you know, then you can really work it. Right here, this is not a great... I mean, this is just, if we know he's in me in coverage, we're going to actually do something. We're going to do this. Because we know he's in me in coverage, we're going to use a, a little bit of a different route combo. Um, but as you see right there, there's a the post. And now we're cooking. Now we're cooking with gas. The post is good against man, especially because of the fact that his better man coverage player is on Devontae Adams. One of the things that might honestly be smart for me, and if you're ever facing in regs a lot of man coverage like this, um, one of the other things that might be smart is to put Devontae Adams at the circle receiver um, and then start running him on other routes. You can do that as well. But, you know, pretty smooth, pretty smooth drive right there. We had one really tough play that we ended up converting. Um, got kind of a crazy instant, instant shed. Part of why it actually makes a lot of sense to throw the ball away is if you don't know how to slide as a quarterback. Sometimes you get so panicked that you forget, like, certain things. That's one of the things that I should have done there. I should have just fell down um, when I saw him coming through there, but I just didn't do that. So, uh, anyways, it's been a long time since he's had the ball, right? It's been about, you know, four or five minutes. So, it's going to be interesting to kind of see. We're going to trust our adjustments, honestly, um, and kind of see what he does here. A little inside zone to start us off. Starts us off with a little inside zone. Kind of exactly what I expected. You should go back to inside zone here if he's smart. You're going to wide side or short side trips. And that's a pick. That's a book. Boom. Exactly what I was talking about. So that's why you would go to the cover two there. So because you go to the split safety, um, it allows you to be a lot more disciplined against the streak. And it also allows you to be a lot more disciplined against any type of like crosser. Um, as you can see right there, able to really do a good job on that. So. Off to a good start. We're going to go to Jets Dig here. This is just in the event that he does something kind of like, I mean, gosh. Okay, that's fine. He's literally just ran. So what he's doing is he's like backing him off individually and he's shading coverage underneath. It's actually not a bad move. Like, it's not a bad move. Um, 
it's just kind of annoying that he's like he's we have 31 points and he's still running the same defense like that's what's annoying but anyway we'll just take our option routes and and, and be content you know you just have to be content um now due to the way that he's playing me in coverage um on Devonte adams that's where i say it's a, it's it's why i like to go to something like a little quick tight end route these little quick tight end routes right here are super effective um unfortunately right there we didn't get enough yards for the first down but they are super effective another thing you can do um is i can do something like this right here so i'm going to use a slant uh i'm going to use uh da, 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 da. i'm going to use a slant i've got the flat here and what i'm going to do is ah shoot i didn't get my adjustments off gosh dang it that's so frustrating. Oh, that's so frustrating. I was trying to hot route the tight end and I accidentally snapped the ball and I had the route wide open and just screwed it up. So awesome. So he's gonna get the ball back and we're gonna have to adjust to that. So not a, not a great look there. But anyways, uh, back to our defense. This defense was the D. Throws it to me one more time. Yep, that's wide open. Let's try to, try to get up some yardage here. And of course we can't get up. If I score seven, the game's over. I mean, the game is pretty much in hand right now, but if I score seven, the game is completely over. It looks like he is going to go ahead and quit out. He can't move on offense right now. The defense completely locked him up in the second half. That one little adjustment that I was telling you about. And again, sometimes it's just one adjustment. He is going to go ahead and concede. I'm a little frustrated. The offense didn't look as good as it normally does. He actually you know, played decent. But thanks for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you have any questions, feel free to text me. And if you want to get the exact offensive and defensive guides that I ran in this video, they are linked in the description.